Hi there, I'm Steve Chambers. I'm here with Uri Tripper. I'm Uri Tripper. Uh, what we're going to do is talk through some of the attic cameras, a little bit about the history and what they might like to use them for. Okay, let's start on my left hand side with the Attic 460. Uh, do you remember about the origins of this camera? Absolutely. Uh, this was basically a, a camera that was, the electrons were designed for an OEM and it ended up becoming a, one of our workhorse cameras um, and fully compatible on the mechanical side with the Celestron Faster, Hyperstar. Yeah, because of its very small profile. Yeah, the, actually, the original camera was designed for one of the older Sony sensors, and it was just really fortuitous that when Sony came up with the new uh, XFU sensors, the 6 megapixel, the 9 megapixel, and eventually a 1.4 megapixel, and that with really, really good uh, sensitivity at the longer wavelengths for narrowband imaging, then this platform was actually compatible with it. Uh, and it's, it's, say it's a real workhorse, so it works with a huge range of telescopes? Completely, completely. Uh, from a focal length uh, ranging from uh, 400 millimeters, uh, maybe even slightly less, up to quite surprising ones. Like uh, I do use one myself with a two meter focal length telescope, bin two by two. It's CCD, you can really bin it effectively. Uh, so yeah, pretty much whatever you choose, whatever your conditions, if you've got a bit of light pollution, this is a really amazing camera. Lovely flat fields, lovely flat bias frames. So yeah, highly recommended. Absolutely. Okay, next up we've got the 383, one of my favorite cameras. Uh, there's an interesting story behind the 383. The sensor itself was originally manufactured by Kodak for Olympus cameras. In fact, there was a time when you couldn't buy uh, Kodak sensors because a whole fab had been turned over to production of this sensor for Olympus. <laughs> that was an interesting time for us. But, uh, after that, basically, then astronomers got the chance to use it, uh, and it's offering a really, really large sensor at a really inexpensive price. Uh, so the pixel size on this one is... 5.4, my friend. Yeah. And the format itself a little bit smaller than IPS. It's smaller. It's 22 millimeters, four-thirds. Yeah. But still, that uh, is significantly bigger than some of the Sony offerings. It offers that opportunity to do some really wide field, incredibly detailed shots. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, again, it's a CCD camera, this one. So you've got all that quality of CCD, all the, elect all the images, all the pixels are read out through the same output stage, nice bias frames. Absolutely. It's a quite a nice sensor. And for the cost, uh, you get quite wide field of view yeah. and a very good performance, deep cooled camera. Um, it's just one of our hit cameras of all times. And it's very, very easy to recommend. It's Absolutely. Not horribly expensive and it is works with a huge range of telescopes and gives us big wide field views. Absolutely. There you go. That's the Attic 383. Okay, uh, keeping with the OnSemi and Kodak theme, the next in line I've placed the Kodak 16200 sensor in the 16200, uh, the Attic 16200 camera. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think a large amount of the design is actually yours on this one, isn't it? Mechanical, especially. Yeah, yeah, most of it was this, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we decided, um, uh, th this sensor was designed as an astronomy sensor uh, from the beginning, a scientific sensor from the beginning. And it's quite large, APS age 35 millimeter diagonals. Uh, with six micron pixel, it is absolutely perfect for just about any telescope out there that we can think of. It is one of those chips that were designed and used for the purpose it's designed for. Completely. Uh, yeah, it's, because it's slightly smaller than that 35mm full frame sensor, it's compatible with more telescopes than, yes. than you would have. So you're more likely to get nice pinpoint stars at the corners. And I think the other thing we did on this camera is really, we went all out with the cooling, didn't we? Yes, yes. So Dual stage, and, uh, very, very high efficient uh, cooling system with a, a big uh, heat sink that would allow to dissipate all the excess heat efficiently, 40 degrees below ambient. Uh, it's a, a beast of a sense. We embedded the shutter inside the camera yeah. Uh, to make the the focal um, the back focus as short as possible, and uh, that makes it especially when used with the EFW3 filter wheel, it's one of the shortest focal lengths, 16 to 100s in the market. Yeah, 
And as Rui knows, one of my favorite features on this camera, you know what I'm going to say now, <laughs> it's got handles. The handles. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a really, really good camera. If, if you can run to it, that will serve you very, very well for Absolutely. years and years to come. And quite cost effective as well. Yeah. There you go, 16200. Okay, so next in line, we have the famous Attic Horizon. In this case, the version two which has been our first, well, it's not exactly our first, it's our second CMOS camera, but it's uh, based on the first um, variant. It was basically designed to be a um, versatile camera, so it can do a bit of high-speed imaging. It can also have, it does have quite low read noise, uh, about one electron, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so if you turn the gain up full, we do lose a bit of the full well depth there, but it will get down to one electron read noise, particularly good if you're doing something like narrowband imaging. Uh, yeah, so, and then if you're doing LRGB, we can use around three electrons read noise and very much as a you would do a traditional CCD camera. Yeah, absolutely. And it's still compatible with Aperstar, uh, in this case on the uh, eight inch and above. The six inch, unfortunately, is a little bit smaller, but it is still a two thirds sensor, so quite large sensor, and available in monochrome and color, which is quite good, especially the color version to use with our Infinity software. Really excellent. So, yeah, excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. The Attic Horizon. There's a quick run through of a subset of the Attic range. I uh, hope that's been interesting. We talked a little bit about some of the cameras. Yes, yes, about its performance, their performances, et cetera, et cetera. And more information can be had at our Attic website, www.atticcameras.com, where you will have a lot of information. That's easy for you to say. Thank you very much for watching and uh, catch you next time. Thank you. All right? Yeah. Sh sh should. I just wondered whether you wanted to maybe you could have another crack at it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't no, like that. You don't like. You don't like. Well, we can do it both ways. I, mean, I quite like a bit of humour in there, but. <laughs> right, that was a quick run through on a subset of the attic cameras that we have in the range. If people would like more information, they can find it at our attic website atticcameras.com, where we'll find complete information on all the products, including the cameras in front of us. And of course, we're also on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, probably on TikTok nowadays. <laughs> but uh, whatever you like, sis, uh, yeah, please stay in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much better. <laughs>